and warmly welcome to our first panelists. We have, uh, from your right, uh, Pia Heikkinen, CEO uh, Nordi. We have Tia Niemi, and now I haven't translated. Palvelutuotantopäällikkö, um, head of production, something, service and production. Pori Energia, Pekka Pirhonen, Director, Energy Sourcing and Business Development, Plug Power. Ok, Helena Badistrand, Head of Projects, Consumer Global Connect. Warmly welcome to you to Kristine Stad and Samhels Dagana. You're a panel of experts and you will share your insights in how South Ostrobotnia, the region we're in, can lead the way in change and innovation while accelerating the speed of transformation. What makes South Ostrobotnia a forerunner of change? What are the key factors that have contributed to this position? How do you look at these things coming from outside the region? Anybody who's... Well, if I may start? Uh, definitely. I would say, uh, well, only based on my experience uh, from meeting the members, the employees and the board of KRSnet that we uh, gladly acquired this spring, what I see is entrepreneurship and a willingness to change. And I see uh, courage to uh, adopt new technologies, to be an early adopter of new technologies. And perhaps even more importantly, I see a ability to engage the people locally and in the region and to share the vision of where you want to be. And I think those ingredients is super important to become and to stay the forerunner of change. You wanted to continue, Bia? Yeah, well, um, I must say that always in, in Kristina Stad, I have felt that the company has been welcome and the cooperation um, with the local people and also the municipality has been working well. So I would say that is one of the um, big things that, that makes the change possible. What can we do better? It's glad to, I'm happy to hear that you have a positive view of entrepreneurship, courage, early adaptability to change and good cooperation. What can we do better in, in Kristina Stad, but also in the region in order to facilitate the, the, um, the change? We all went quiet. <laughs> oh, we're, we're brilliant already. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> Proud at this part, brave to start it this part. But yeah, well, it's always what we can do more is to have the discussion with each other. Like for example, the all the people here at this panel. Unfortunately, I haven't met you, <laughs> so I think that would be really. This is a really good place to have start a discussion with the new people, and that's what something what we need to do more, and also then spread the knowledge in other parts of the Finland and also in the in the northern countries that what what do we have here in this area and what specialties and how we can actually work with it so cooperation discussion and communication yes exactly you want it Pia to comment yeah well maybe one thing could be because many of the companies also come from outside and don't know the region or the municipality yet, and, and what is here, and what are the competencies, and the local companies that are here. Um, maybe that is something that the region could could help with. Um, some kind of listing of, of the companies that, that would like to be involved. Because, I mean, for instance, Nordi is doing renewable energy projects, but it's so much more. Um, we are specialists in the renewable energy, but we need a lot around that. And yeah, there, there have been many entrepreneurs who have been contacting us directly, but maybe then there could be also some kind of uh, listing for, for companies to know which kind of local um, companies there is and, and could cooperate. I'm glad you, you mentioned that. And just before I let you in, in Pekka, because business Christina Stad uh, has been for some time, half a year, year working on a, um, a list of... Um, 
Alihankkia, uh, a, a list of companies that, that could provide different services. And it, it's where Business Christina studies building that at the moment, just re requesting and responding to your request. So it's, it's, it's underway, but of course we can do more on, uh, on it as well. But Pekka, you wanted to comment. Yeah, maybe second that. So uh, our company coming from outside Finland, we really appreciate the local facilitation to building the ecosystems, showing what potential there is that we already noticed back in 2022 with Business Finland coming to the Finland to see that what kind of opportunities could be there. And we felt really, really welcome, especially in Kristenstad, to discuss with the community, to discuss with the major, uh, knowing what opportunities there could be. We, we cannot do it alone. We need local. This is your home ground. We need local people, local companies to build the ecosystem to move forward. That we appreciate. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, of course, from, from the, the city point of view and also business, Christine, I start, we're always happy to help. But I'm going to pick up on, on your, your um, request for more collaboration between companies and, and the smaller ones in the, in the municipality, but on the, in the region as, as well. Um, is you want to comment? Okay, well, yes. Uh, <laughs> Hand moving. So, um, perhaps uh, Global Connect is still a, a quite unknown company, but we um, we are one of the leading infrastructure, digital infrastructure providers in the Nordics. So, obviously, when we uh, discuss speed of change, we uh, tend to believe, and I think that is actually true, not only that we are into digital infrastructure, but in order to uh, serve and to speed up transformation... In today's society, to have a solid connection is crucial to actually uh, fuel the digitalization that we see now in society. And uh, for me, uh, we are we are now, uh, I mean, you have a solid network here in Kristinestad, which we now are happily integrating into our uh, Nordic fiber network, spanning across all the Nordic countries. And we we just finalized a what we call the digital highway connecting Berlin to Luleå, crossing over to Haparanda, and now we are expanding this into Finland, and we are actually passing through Kristinestad on our way to Helsinki. So this network that is now part of Global Connection Network is connected to the continent and to all uh, surrounding countries, and to be able to deliver that kind of capacity I think is crucial. Uh, I mean, we obviously love fiber, but the main reason why we're doing this, why we're doing this massive infrastructure project is because there's an ever-increasing ever demand of capacity, not least from global tech companies who are looking to our region, the Nordics, to establish data centers. So we are continuously expanding our network to deliver this capacity to those customers and now we actually have put a Christina Stad right on that digital highway. So I think that, I, I mean, my hope is that that will actually fuel and speed up the uh, transformation in this region. Digital highway, we have fin grid power lines that, that the rest of your companies need. Also, uh, we have the E8, um, but still we're a small region with a small population. And I sometimes feel that we have a difficulty to make our voice heard on a, on a larger scale, uh, on a national European scale. Uh, so how should we or how could we in this region be the, the forerunners in making uh, us punch over the, our weight in order to make the change happen even, even more? If you, you understand what I'm looking at. Because you all companies come from outside, you have connections outside of our municipality borders, uh, and that's where we need to also take next step to, to move on in order to, to facilitate the, the change and the, the, the being the forerunner. But how, how could we and how should we punch over our weight in this region to make our voices heard on national and European level? Yeah. Well, I think there has been quite a lot of uh, good things done already and maybe that's then a way to to lift that what has already been made and also those things that are uh, on a way right now um, maybe that's a way to to be heard and also the 
the change is obvious here because you have a history um, and a history where um, some businesses that were there are not there anymore. So it's quite natural that, that there is a change. Um, so may, maybe lifting up those things that are happening right now uh, can give you the we're visibility. Coming, we're coming back to communication. Yes, Pekka. Yes, uh, I would say that open discussion, supply and demand, not only on electricity, but logistics and, and workforce and capabilities, that what the actual investments requires in the long term. So I think the, the, the cities and the communities are best to address that and uh, companies and industries are really happy to support that discussion, that what is actually needed in the long, long run to come into the city or community to make investments. It's not purely the investment money on the hardware or, or the equipment. We need the surroundings, we need the infrastructure, we need people eventually, how to train those, how to collaborate with, with schools and education bodies and so forth. And that's a long-term uh, issue. And, and like I said, we are happy to support the communities on that discussion and bring that demand side. And then the communities can start discussing about the supply. You're touching upon a very important question uh, that we've been, been discussing uh, quite a lot with business. Christine Estad is, is when, because your company is, is preparing for hydrogen and, and green steel, and it's going to be a large uh, industry with lots of, of work opportunities. How should we, together with you, but also with the rest of you, uh, prepare for, for the influx of people that we need here? You mentioned it already, the surroundings, the education, but... How do we prepare for the scenario so we don't get a uh, a bad one as we see in north of Sweden, where, where I've been reading articles on, on bad housing for, for those working at a certain um, company in Skellefteå? So any any thoughts on how we should prepare from local level in order to have all the things you, Becca, were talking about ready that day when, when there's an influx of people, all from education to housing to you name it? I think one option could be to start building a kind of roadmap. Let's put a strategic target for X number of years and then tear down that to the milestones that what do we actually need to do. Let's say that if we need, let's say, 300 people, we don't need them at once. We need, let's say, first 20, then more 50, and, and et cetera, gradually increasing that. Thinking about with the vocational schools that how do we educate those people and think about that what could there be for the families, how do we integrate those in the cities and the communities. That's a big plan, but we are more than happy to start building that with the communities. But uh, like I said, I think roadmap is something to, that we could start doing and putting those milestones, let's say, for every year at what can we do, uh, how, what do we need here, actually. And then I would say that then people will come. Yes, please. I, I would just like, like to say that uh, we need the courage to say it aloud, like that everybody will hear us, that, that what are actually the plans and that we are building this city for the people also and not only for the co companies or work workplaces. But it's a really good place to live with your family, have the schools, everything close by. So it's something that, that needs to be get more up that everybody can see it. And also, 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 there's there's really good facilities for for the companies already. There is a there's a really good good network. The hardboard electrical grids, the distributing network, the global connection, the like like that that's all already here or coming coming here. So it's I I think the main thing is we just need to say it aloud more often and in more specific places. And really get the people to also know that, that, that we are developing this area. So it's safe to move here, get in here, get the business here, and get the family here. Yes, I think, I think also, I mean, you mentioned um, that there are examples from, uh, from Sweden, for instance, uh, bad and worse. And uh, I mean, that's, that's a good thing uh, that you... Kristinestad is, is not the first uh, city with this... Uh, opportunity and challenge. So there are obviously a lot of examples to learn from. And I think, I mean, new new people, new competences entering into cities is also a great accelerator for change. So it's, uh, as I see, it's a, a huge opportunity, not only the people coming here to work and the companies, but their spouses, 
wives, husbands, kids, and to make sure that everything uh, is in place for everyone uh, to be happy and to work remotely, uh, that will probably do it. And I mean, obviously, you have such a beautiful city and the infrastructure is in place. So uh, I think you're in a good position to make this really work well. Communication, not building the city only for, for the ones coming, but also with those who already live here. Um, how important is it that we address the concerns raised by, by some members of our community with regards to, to pace of change? Because we have people that are happy with things being the way they are. And we are, have people who want the change to, to happen even faster. Uh, thoughts on how to, to handle these two groups, the ones saying, let's not change anything, and the ones saying, we're not changing fast enough, we're not adapting to the future fast enough. How do we tackle this issue? Well, if I, a short comment, uh, I am, um, I'm impatient as a person. I have my team here, they, they might uh, confirm that. So, I see them smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I know that. And uh, given that I tend to believe that good ideas should have been implemented yesterday, in my team, I need people that raises risks with ideas, who tells me that your idea is uh, actually pretty stupid. Uh, there's a better idea if you just uh, spend some time thinking about it. And I, I think the same goes for uh, society. We all have different strengths, and I think we probably need them all in order to have a successful development. Let's start with, with Bia. Yeah, well, that's not an easy question. <laughs> um, but I think um, today is, an, is a good example uh, of what can be done. Uh, open dialogue is, is really good and I think we probably cannot have too much of, of that. So that, that, that's really good and, and also, I mean, we as a company, we need, we need to take responsibility in taking uh, the local people and the local associations uh, into the discussions, but also the municipality has a, has a position where, where you can encourage to that. So that, that's really good that you are doing um, things as, as this event today. Thank you. Yeah, now I would say that this kind of a change management is a business as usual for many companies that they need to kind of foresee that what's coming and, and discuss openly with, with communities and stakeholders and think and mitigate what's going on and really listen to the communities and stakeholders that what do they really think and find the best available solutions and mitigate those issues. And it's it's eventually that the, it's it's growing and we need to manage how to grow it and how to involve the, the people to make, make it happen. A discussion is, is good and you say dialogue and, and um, mitigate. And at some point you probably just have to make a decision. This is how we're going to do it and, and try to make the most of it, make the best of it. Because I don't think you can always please everybody. Uh, so it's, it's a balance. Um, you were talking about um, leadership and management. How, how, do we, how do we then assure in this region that the change management is done sustainably? And I don't mean only ecological. I mean, we touched upon it, the social aspects of, of sustainability, but also financial aspects of sustainability. How can we ensure that that um, the municipality or the ones living here uh, and the ones moving in and all the companies, uh, that the change is, is managed in, in a sustainable way. How, how do you, in your companies, consider change in, in sustainability in different aspects of, of the word sustainability? Becca? Well, maybe company coming from outside Finland that when we talk about sustainability, the, obviously the environment is the big issue. But like you mentioned, then there's the social and economic issue. And not having the legacy of, of business in Finland, we really need to dig deeper and, and, and think about what could this happen, uh, what could this mean and what could happen, and discuss openly with the stakeholders. So how, do, how do we really actually manage this? We need to have all the regulations and, and permits and laws in place uh, to move forward. And that's mandatory. So 
there's been discussion that how, how do you cut corners and how do you put things forward and, and basically that's not possible in the projects in Finland. You really need to go by the book and by the law and follow those and not anticipating or, or guessing anything but going, let's say, in a project world gate by gate thinking about what really can happen and have those reviews and have those decisions really made. And it was mentioned here somewhere that companies really need to take their own risk of putting money on the design, on putting money there. And that's what we are willing to do. We we'll foresee that there are really, really good business opportunities in Finland in, in, in many in places and many ways. The risk is, is in our side at the moment. So we need to really think about that. How do, how do we move forward? We are not relying on any subsidies or government monies. We need to take the risks risks before uh, those decisions are made. I think also what we've been commenting on uh, a lot is communication and for a sustainable change, as I see it, it should also sustain. And then I think the communication, the dialogue with all local, regional stakeholders to share the vision. So this change is happening because we all want to get to this stage instead. So I think a closed dialogue is really key to that. And uh, I mean, I, I've been here talking to uh, a lot of people in Kristina Stad with the change that happened this spring uh, when we acquired the network. And obviously uh, not everyone thought that was a brilliant idea. But I think in order for us to land in this decision, uh, I think the dialogue was uh, super key. Um, and really important to make the change happen and also to share the vision to have that change sustain. Dialogue, uh, you've had a um, couple of, of um, meetings with the owners of, of Coeresnet before you acquired it. A uh, lot of discussion, I was participating in one of them. Uh, you probably have with your solar park here had some public meetings or going to have. Body Energy has been here for so long that we, <laughs> for a long time, uh, and, and Plug Power is new to the stage. How, how can we continue the dialogue with your companies, with the different perspectives you have? We'll, because you had the meetings with the, with the previous owners, but how can we continue the, the dialogue? How, what are your plans on, on, on that? Will it be once a year when we have these days, or will it be... Will you be here often? Will you have public meetings? Do you have a, a phone number or a, a office here where people can knock on the door to have the dialogue? Well, at least uh, what is easiest, uh, we have the contact details. Uh, people are always welcome to call us and, and discuss different manners. Uh, we are really happy to, to join different kind of events. Um, Yeah, and that, that that's a that's a good question also uh, to to plan. But what, what what could be there now? We have been focusing on the what is before you realize a a project. But actually, if we look at the future, uh, we should maybe as as companies also think about what do we do then when when the projects are realized. What what kind of um, events or, or discussions are are needed there? So I don't have a direct answer, but that's an interesting thought for the future as well. Yeah, I may continue. Mila told that we have been here so long. <laughs> but, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, at, at least more, more, but more than 15 years. <laughs> so, so quite long time ago, time already. And I think the, the, the best way is, is to meet actually the people of, of the town, like really not just once a year, but really more often <laughs> i don't know it, it could be it, it depends what what's happening that how often it should be then like we don't we don't have the office here we have the phone call and the email email address and the web page where you can always contact us and and we actually are here every, every week we don't have the office but we we are are here there are our, our cars are com coming here every week and you can actually see us here but there's not specific place to office office to visit us And I think maybe maybe more, we had like the open doors day when the when the power plant there started. But but it, it haven't been like 
now at, at least after the 2020 year that there hasn't been any, any open doors there. but there could be like that again to actually really meet the people and discuss the new opportunities of this area that would be really great Becca, I hear a lot of questions about your company in the streets. People are, are curious. Uh, so so what, what's the dialogue? How are you planning the dialogue with our uh, citizens? With the citizens, uh, along the projects, there are obviously a project meetings with the communities and with the stakeholders. And whenever there is a need to have more information, we are open to have, a, have an open discussion. For example, in Porvo, where is one of our projects, we just recently have an open discussion with the local community people that what is going to actually happen there. We are planning a hydrogen plant there uh, on, on the seaside. And, and that was really, really, uh, how do you say, warmly welcomed by the community that it was not, that man, not mandatory by any law or, or permitting. We just felt that we, we could share that what's going on. And I think that similar issue could be here or, or the other project locations, that if there is a need for discussion, we can have a and coffee meeting and, and discuss with people that what they want to know and what are our plans and etc. So feel free to propose. And we have an office. So you can knock on the door here in Kristinestad. And we are active from Tornio down to Helsinki and from Kristinestad all the way to Kopio. And the setup we have here, where we have dialogue with the municipality and we have local presence, that is our preferred state. Uh, so we are active now. We're actively constructing in 26 different municipalities. And the, the thing that I would like to wish for, for, for my company in Finland, is that we would have even more dialogue with the municipalities. So we definitely intend to keep the dialogue here. And this is uh, how we have it here in Kristinestad. That's, uh, that's excellent because we, uh, we have local presence and we have contacts with the municipality. And that is something that we strive for in all the municipalities that we're active. Because that is super important. Uh, we are, if we do not have an active dialogue of what we intend to do, we might be seen as the one uh, entering a city, destroying the streets, instead of entering a city, enabling the digital transformation. So um, we would like to keep those dialogues open. Brilliant. I have one more question, but I'm looking at Lynn. How many more minutes? Yeah, it, it. Okay, I have one final question to you, and then we have time for one or two questions from the audience. We do the my last one, make it short, and then we open up for one or two questions from the audience. Um, where are we in 10 years' time in Kristinestad and in this region if we are successful in accelerating the pace of change? When we sit here in 10 years' time, what has happened? Go ahead, Pia. I'm just picking one to keep it short. Um, you are having education also for the for those who are needed uh, within the new businesses. Well, from our, our, our company side, like there is the hydrogen plant here, and we are we are using the heat, recovered heat from that plant. Yeah, I would say that we have the green hydrogen plant and green iron plant up and running and, and, and things look good. And I would say that we are investing half a billion euros in Finland and I would like to invest a lot of that in this region and expand the network even further. I hope we got that on tape so we can come back to it in 10 years time. Uh, any questions from the audience? And we might need a microphone for the ones in the audience asking a question. Uh, uh, can we have uh, business Christina start? Somebody running with the microphone? Lukan, any questions? Kai Char has a question. Before we can Kai so hit that day. I wonder. <laughs> The plug power, how's your timetable? I understand that you have a lot of permissions before you get the, definitely the investing decisions. Yeah, that is correct. So, so we are currently searching for consultants to start to start the environment impact assessments by end of this year. So that's one great milestone. 
before the detailed design and before the final investment decisions. We have some flexibilities, obviously, in the schedules, but we, like mentioned, we are going by the book and we are listening to the communities and we are mitigating those to find the best possible solution. The time schedule is tight, that is right, but we do our best to fulfill the schedule and, and, and move forward with the partners and with the, with the electric, electricity companies and so forth. Thank you. Now I look at Lynn, who is the master of time. One minute. One minute. If not, then I'm going to say thank you very much to our panelists for participating today and sharing your thoughts. And as I con said, we have it on tape, so I'll see you here in 10 years' time and see if, if things have changed the way we hope they have. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the day.